Today, I thought since migration is going to be on, I thought I would give you some, uh, some tips on, um, I know that we're going to have birds done next week, but I know that they're not going to be able to concentrate on one thing. So I decided I would just kind of do, and I've only done this one other time, um, just a quick little thing on raptors and migration because they're going to start coming through soon. And um, Texas is kind of cool because we can get stuff from the Northeast coming down. We can get stuff from the Midwest coming down and from the West. And so then they'll all funnel down. And uh, one of the famous places is around Corpus Christi, Hazel Baysmore. Um, and there's, I mean, you could just be somewhere around San Marcos or anywhere around here and just look up and you'll see a bunch of stuff flying over. And that's what it's going to look like, a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to try to show you some things so it doesn't look like just a bunch of stuff. So you can make a decision as to what it might be. So I'm going to just um, throw a few things under here. <coughs> um, so these are just some little reference things. Um, there's one, birds of prey. Um, there's a, a flash guide thing, hawks. This one's kind of cool. Um, it's a Peterson flash guide. I mean, you can even get these now. I didn't bring the one that you can get at HEB and ACE and all those. But, um, but it gives you, like, in flight, which is really cool. Um, so, yeah, so it's really good for the silhouette. That's why I really like this one, the silhouettes. And then it has other info on this side, too. So... Um, but yeah, the silhouettes, um, <clears throat> and that's what we're going to kind of go over in a little bit. Um, and then there will be a test at the end. I figured this one needs a test. So, um, <clears throat> and then there's the, the Hawk Field Guide. Um, and then there's uh, North American Raptors, too. It's basically the same guy that did this, did this, um, the same two guys. Um, but it has really great pictures. And I think, wasn't this one white-tailed hawk, Dick? This one was um, last year down, it was in San Marcos or something. Yeah, I guess you're right. That, this yeah. one makes something. So, um, and then this is a really good book for, um, it, it's, it's more of a, um, <laughs> It kind of speaks about the hawks and describes them, but he, he describes them really, really well in here. So um, if you, you know, like it'll just like talk about like generic rat exhibitors or something like that, and then it'll tell how to tell them apart, and he goes into things. I'm more of a picture kind of guy, but, um, but I have read through this, and it really is a good description um, of how to identify. Um, so, what I thought I would do is show you, well, just kind of tell you a little bit of information first. I don't think I can fold this back. Um, well, I guess you got to be a kid to do that. Um, is, um, first of all, what is a raptor? Anybody know what a raptor is? Don't say velociraptor. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a bird of prey. So it can be diurnal or nocturnal. So diurnal would be daytime, and that would be, you know, hawks, eagles, falcons, vultures. Um, now, you know, depending on how I learned these a certain way, now they broke them up in the New Sibley book, and they're all over the place. And I don't agree with it, and since I'm the one up here, I'm doing it my way. <laughs> um, so... They're, um, they're birds of prey, which usually means that they're going to have hook beak and they're going to have talons. Um, and I have a few little fun items from back in the lab days here, um, which I can show you. So and I'm going to pass some of these around. They've been dead for a while, so they're probably good to hold. Um, okay. <coughs> so... All right, the hook beak. Um, so hook beak and talons. Um, so usually with birds, it kind of um, 
will tell what that bird will do or can do by looking at its feet and its beak. I mean, it's going to like determine how that thing lives and where it lives. Um, just beak and feet. Um, so I'll pass this around. Does anybody have a guess as to what hawk that is? It's an unfortunate one that ran into a, or flew into a fence, but um, but I, ex I extracted parts from them. Uh, this is uh, the wing from it, and showing the hollow bone too, which is kind of cool. Um, so this one's a red-tailed hawk. A lot of people call them chicken hawks, but it's a red-tailed hawk. And uh, so I'll just pass that, and here's the skull. And if you look at a uh, raptor's skull, it's um, <coughs> the eye of it is going to be enlarged, and so it can't move in the socket. So you can stare like at me, and without moving your head, you can move your eyes right and left. Birds of prey cannot do that. Their eyes are so huge, they can't move their eyes, and that's why, like an owl is, quote unquote, oh, it turned its head all the way around. No, it is not Linda Blair. Um, so it can't spin its head all the way around, but it can do, you know, you know, like 270 degrees. So, um, so they can they can turn their heads far, but their eyes are gigantic because they're actually seeing about eight times, they're like the same as you having eight power binoculars. So that's what they can do. So, so like at 100 yards, they can be at one goal post looking at a mouse at the other goal post. We can't do that. At least I can't. Um, okay, so um, their wings, um, so they're gonna be different shapes. They might be different colors. Um, they might do different things with their wings, and there's different behaviors to identify a lot of these raptors, which, you know, we can go into a little bit later when we do each group. Um, but they're, I just talked about owls real quick. Um, that way, since they're a raptor also, they're the nocturnal raptor. Um, they have some special features that help them to fly quietly. Number one, when you're passing that wing around, oh, I didn't pass that wing. <laughs> Hang on, I'm gonna pass it. Um, it, it can fly. <clears throat> um, feel that one and then compare it with the great horned owl. When you feel this one, super, super smooth and the thing to look at, um, oh wait. Okay, so if you see right along the edge right here, see those little uh, feathers sticking up? Okay, so that's like a comb, and that actually, when they flap their wings, will break the sound a little bit. It's kind of, basically, it's a physics thing, so it'll actually keep them from making a lot of noise. Like, you've had birds fly over you and make a lot of noise. I've had owls fly right over me, and the only thing I knew that they were there was when I felt the breeze go by, okay? Um, especially when you're calling for screech owls on Christmas counts, they get very testy. You wear a hat, and I usually call with my hand in front of my face because I've had them come right at me. Um, my friend got his hat knocked off, so it's kind of, kind of cool. Um, but this, um, this little edge right here will help break the sound so they can fly quietly. Um, this is a great horned owl. This one is a screech owl. And screech owls here um, in central Texas are, I think, almost all gray. I've never seen a red one um, here. So you have? Like where? My yard. Really? Yes. OK. Well, that's the first one. So, But usually they're almost exclusively gray here. Um, but this is the little screech owl, and you can almost see on the leading edge a little bit on that one, too. But they're super, super soft. David, how long will the feathers stay on this bird attached to the bone? Uh, the way that I have it now, I mean, it'll, it'll stay there forever. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'll, it'll be on there forever. Yeah, it's so weird. And, you know, if you ever 
do grab them and peel. It is amazing how tightly they're, they're in there. I mean, it is really hard to get them out. Um, that's why I'm not into plucking chickens. <laughs> <coughs> okay, um, here's the talons from an owl. Um, this is a great horned owl also. Um, these are very, very powerful. And now owls do not have a good sense of smell because, and I'm just assuming they don't, because one of the favorite foods of a great horned owl is a skunk. So oh. I'm, uh, I'm kind of <laughs> guessing. They might, not, they might not have a good sense of smell. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, one thing with raptors, females are always larger than the males, okay? Um, and so if you get used to it, like whenever you're identifying birds or animals for the most part, using color and size are bad things to use, but it's what we see the most, so we use it. But you have to be kind of used to seeing a bird at a certain distance constantly to be able to say, hey, you know, like, I do it. Um, hey, that's a male red tail, and I'll be going down the road at 70 miles an hour looking up. And, and I'm probably right because I've looked at enough of them, and that's my speed, you know. Um, but if... Um, if you're not sure, sometimes it gets kind of hard to tell the difference, but if you get two together, you can for sure see a size difference. If there's a male and a female, you can, you can tell. Um, now with hawk watching, um, a lot of people go, ah, you know, it's kind of boring. Um, it can be, there's times when it can be really good where you could see thousands of hawks and tens of thousands in a day, okay? I saw one time kettles, and there, a kettle would be like this broad-winged hawk, which I found in East Texas when I was going to school. Um, what they do, a kettle, is where they're flying, and they hit a thermal, and then they all get together, and then they go in a circle, and then they just keep going up and up and up, and then it could be a big mass of them, and then when they hit the top, then they'll just glide out to the next kettle. Um, and they'll usually do it between, like when they go off the East Coast, they're coming down the Appalachians, and then they're coming down, and then they'll hit along the Texas coast, and then a lot of them go down, they go down to Veracruz, Mexico. That's where they get the huge, huge numbers, and then a lot of them will keep going to South America. Um, so, yes? So, I don't know, five years ago in Fredericksburg, I saw a huge kettle of hogs come down by the Pedernales River mm -hmm. and into a pasture. Yeah. But it was all different kinds. Yeah, there can be a bunch. A lot of those would probably be Swainson's hawks, but they can be there can be a whole bunch in one group. Yeah, but the, the famous ones that kettle are broad wings in the east and Swainson's in the west. Um, and a broad wing is, I mean, you can see this is not a very big hawk, okay? But it is uh, one of the bootios, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second. Um, but <clears throat> the, this, this migration kind of thing, you, you can get online and you can watch, and different hawk watches will report what they've seen that day, and you can almost kind of track. We used to do it when I lived in the Northeast, and we would wait, because I was not far from Hawk Mountain, you know, which is a famous place. If you don't know about it, you should uh, definitely um, Google it um, and look it up because I mean they used to stand there with shotguns just like they still do in Italy um, and several other places and as the birds came over they just shoot them down um, and it wasn't until like 1933-34 that they stopped that and then it became preserved um, but they still do that in Europe I mean that's like a big thing so yes so what makes them form kettles um, so they're watching each other and they're trying to save as much energy as they can. So they're watching, they can kind of feel whether or not, and so they're usually doing it along mountains because as the sun heats up the earth, because a lot of them, they won't even migrate until like 10 in the morning because then that's when it's heating up, shooting, you know, 
you know, the heat up a little bit, and which gives them a little thermal updraft. And then they'll go, and then they just follow along the mountains. And then there will be different little swirls that they'll hit when they watch other birds. You know, if those birds are struggling, then they might all move over this way. But there, there have been kettles like hundreds of thousands at a time going through. I mean, probably in the old days there were more. I mean, there's less of everything now. But um, these, um, <clears throat> okay, so the birds, okay, the groups that you have, and I'll just show you, if you're looking, oh, this is going to, I don't know how I can, my, there we go. All right, so if you're looking at shapes, um, you know, you have ravens thrown in there, you got crows thrown in there. So those are not raptors, but they can fool you, um, especially ravens here, you know, because they'll be in little groups. But you can usually tell because ravens, they'll go like this and start screwing around, you know. They're not, you know, being serious about their migration. Um, <clears throat> so let me show you the different groups. Um, vultures. Um, okay, so here we have two vultures. Uh, I don't know how to make that not shiny, but um, you guys can see that well enough, right? <laughs> oh, you want me to stand here and hold that. All right. Memorize that. Okay, now. <clears throat> All right, so this is a turkey vulture. Um, and the way that you tell the difference is you can see the silver lining. And you'll see that right there. Also, these will kind of fly like this, and then they'll rock back and forth more. These will flap a little harder. And those are the black vultures. This is a turkey vulture. Um, I'll pass it around. It's really, really light. But I mean, if you were just to hold it like this, I mean, it doesn't take anything to go. Um, this one is shedding, so I apologize if it lands in your drink or something. <laughs> Um, here's, okay, so here's turkey vulture and black vulture. Um, when they're young, both will have a black head, but if you look at the turkey vulture on the top, it's more of like a, a collar where the black vulture will have more of, um, it'll have feathers going up the back of the nape a little bit more. So. At a distance, you'll be able to see even in no light, you know, a silhouette, and you see a little bit more feathers in the back. It's going to be a black vulture. Most of the ones on the cell towers here are black vultures, because usually in the south, there's more black vultures. In the north, there's more turkey vultures. <clears throat> so, David, have you heard that um, turkeys, vultures, have a better sense of smell? Yes, that's true. And that's part of so their nasal captivity or something like that is bigger and, and so that Yeah, so and lower. then yeah, and you'll also see them flying lower and you'll yeah, see the tur the black vultures flying much higher. Right. So they hunt more by sight and they're also cheaters because they hunt <laughs> off of the turkey vultures because they're actually a little more aggressive than them. So they'll come in and they're like you know, number one at the feeding, unless there's a caracara there, then the caracara will take over number one, yeah. then the black vultures, then the turkey vultures. <clears throat> okay, so that's vultures. Now you guys have to remember these silhouettes because I'm going to take away the names in a little while. Okay, <clears throat> eagles. All right, there's only two eagles, a bald eagle and a golden eagle. Um, they're going to have very long plank-like wings. And so everybody goes, oh, bald eagle's got a white tail. No, it doesn't always have a white tail. Um, but this is the bald eagle mature, which, you know, they're like four or five years old before they get the white head and the white tail. Um, and then this is the immature. And they can be all kinds of grades of in between this and this, and it, it is it takes a little while to tell the difference, but it can be done. Um, and then the golden eagle, here is the adult, and then here is the immature. Um, these we get more in the winter time, maybe further west of here. They'll come down in the winter. Because okay. I've seen them around um, Fredericksburg and stuff in the winter. 
Yeah, and so they'll be around, and then not to mix it up, but these will be at Canyon Lake too. And these will be more around lakes, rivers, stuff like that, you know, because, and they're actually more of a scavenger. So I think, you know, Franklin, Benjamin Franklin had it right to maybe go with the wild turkey than these guys, because these are scavengers, but they do look really cool, especially when you see 30 of them in a tree together or something like that. That is kind of neat. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, so eagles usually longer plank-like wings, and their wingspan is seven feet, oh, by the way. These are five and a half feet and five feet, almost five feet for those. Um, Budios, okay, this is your typical hawk. That would be like this, um, or also a red shoulder, a red tail hawk the Broadwing hawk, the Swainson's hawk, that's a Budio. So they're going to have more of the rounded wings, fanned out tail um, than some of the other ones. Um, now, keep in mind, you know, these guys, their wings seem to be a little pointier. So when you do see these, it's more of like a candle flame. Um, and then they do have a little black lining around it on, on an adult bird. So, and you can see that from way up. Um, okay, Exhibitor. This would be um, sharp shins and Cooper's hawks for here. If you were further way up north, then it would be a goshawk, and that would be the largest of the exhibitors. Um, they had old names for these. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, we don't, you know, probably don't even see the old names anymore. I don't know if I have. Let's see, some of their, yeah. All right, I'll just show that one later. So um, these are built for going through the woods, so their tail is long so that they can flick their tail and then bolt through the woods. Um, they're kind of like a little fighter, you know, maneuverable fighter, you know, that go through stuff. Um, and then they, and so this would be, here would be Cooper's Hawks now. In the winter, sharp shins will come down too. They're the ones that you get ticked off at that you have hawks at your feeder. Well, that's these guys. So you just hope they're picking off white winged doves and house sparrows. Um, okay, ospreys. Um, this you're pretty much just going to see around water. Um, you'll see them if you're going down the valley or something. You'll see them along the Rio Grande. You'll see them along rivers. Um, they're the ones that have the white heads, but if you look carefully at how the wings are, that's important if you see them overhead like that. Um, if you see them straight on, it looks like an M that got stepped on. So it'll be like an M, but it'll be kind of squished out, and you can kind of see um, a little line, you know, <clears throat> like it's not straight across like a lot of other birds. It's kind of like this in an M. And there's only one osprey. And it's found on every continent except Antarctica. When they start stocking trout in the Guadalupe River, there's a lot of Bingo. them. Yeah, okay. And when, um, what's the month for that? November, December, January. Okay, yeah. Because then they're already done breeding further up north, and they're down here. So, yeah, so they're having fun. <clears throat> okay, harriers. This used to be called a marsh hawk. Um, a harrier... You're going to find in um, maybe more coastal, but you'll find them in the winter here over fields, and they'll fly over, and they're actually, they use their ears, and uh, they'll fly real low over fields, and they listen for mice, and that's how they hunt. And this is one of the few um, of the raptors that are sexual dim dimorphic because the males are gray, the females are brown. And then the immatures are kind of like a brown tan. And it takes them a couple years to get into their exact plumage. So they call the males a gray ghost, and they really look cool. You know, they're really gray and white. Um, and they kind of rock around low and stuff over top of fields and marshes. And that's why they're called a marsh hawk. And they okay. Huh? They hunted packs. Yeah, and they will. They'll hunt in big groups, too, sometimes. And especially in the evening before it gets dark. And then they'll 
go to rest, and then short-eared owls in some areas will come out about the same time. Right before they go down, the short-eared owls come up. Okay. Um, falcons. Um, falcons are characterized by more pointed wings, and they also have a longer tail for maneuverability. And we have three here. Um, and these are the ones where they have the old names here. Uh, so the peregrine used to be called a duck hawk, a pigeon hawk, and, and the kestrel is the sparrow hawk. So they're not hawks, they're falcons. Um, and, and these also, you can tell um, some of the sexes of these too. They, they look a little different. Do we get marmots? Yeah. yeah, during migration. But I mean, they're, not, they're only going to be migrants. Um, peregrines, if you go to some of the uh, bat areas, you know, where there's bats, there are some peregrines that live out here. And so they'll pick off bats and then go to, you know, probably a canyon or cliff wall where they might have a nest. So, or downtown Houston where they might be on a building um, or New York. Um, <coughs> okay, a kite. This is not the same as what you flew as a kid, okay? Um, kites are kind of weird. This is like a, their typical drawing, but kites can be different. So there's ones that have broad wings, kind of like a bootio. There's ones that have wings like this. Um, so kites would be, we've got a, a few, a uh, Mississippi kite. That's the primary one that you'll see, like, and that'll be in big groups too in the spring usually the most. Um, and then there will also be um, white-tailed kites, and those are the ones that will hover when they're hunting. So if you go to South Texas, you'll just see them like this, hovering. Um, kestrels do that. Um, Red-tailed hawks do that. So after a while, you know which, which hawk or which raptor does those little behavioral things. And you can be zipping down the road at 70 and not pull over and go, yeah, I know what that is, you know. Um, and owls usually look like that so that you don't confuse them. They look like they have no head. Um, and, of course, they're going to be more nocturnal or crepuscular. You know, you're going to have the dawn and dusk. And then a raven looks like he has a spade-shaped tail and then a crow would look like that, but would have a straight tail rather than a spade. And we don't have many crows here anyway. All right, ready for the test? Awesome. See, you had plenty of study time. So why don't you put up a caracara? It actually is with the falcons. So, yeah. Falcons? Yep, it's with falcons. Oh, but here, wait. There, I'll put it up for you. There he is, right there. Yeah, he's cool, man. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, let me just show you this real quick. The um, this is for Hawk Mountain. Oops, gotta hold it. Um, okay. So this is Pennsylvania. So if you think about this, this is the big times for migration in Pennsylvania. Um, so they have to get down here. So all you got to do is kind of move the timeline to the right a little bit, and then that's when some of these will be hitting here. Um, but you can see, like, broad wings come in mass numbers, and usually the middle of September up there, and then they're coming down. And they're the ones that have the mass numbers, you know, along with Swainson's in, at Hazel Baysmore here in Texas. And here we go. You ready? Oh, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, Nighthawk, right? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay. What group? No. I don't have a cheat sheet for you. Falcon, who said that? Yes. All right, you're not allowed to answer the next one, then. Okay. Long tail. Excipiter. All right. Osprey. Osprey, you spray, we all spray. That's the bootio. That's this guy. <clears throat> A 
occipiter. Oops, did I do that one already? Ooh, I'm sneaky. <laughs> I know that's mean. Harrier, yeah. <clears throat> Eagle. Okay. All right, which one's which? Okay. All right. Falcon. All right, and I never, you know why? Okay, hang on, because I never made, I'm going to have to show you one of these without the thing on the top. Okay. That's the raven. Owl. And that's the kite. But if you can um, if you can get something like that one that has the silhouettes, that is the best way to learn these. You know, with the colors, I like to see the colors. Um, yeah, this is the Peterson. But the other one is good also. I just I can't remember because uh, Kevin Carlson did the pictures on that one. But the um, this one just has you know it's it's kind of cool the way they did that. Um, so that you can really see it well, like especially like here's the the uh, eagles here, you know, and then the osprey they throw in there because that can trick you when you see them at a distance. You're going to think you have an eagle and it's an osprey. So, um, all right, I think I'm out of time. Thank you all, and if you want.